from my point of view. So at first, uh, about my session, still looking for the big screen from Android TV to, to Chromecast. Now at first, some information about me you can find on several uh, social networks. We have, I have also some repositories and slides uh, on GitHub and SlideShare where you can see my previous sessions from the last years. I'm an organizer of the GTG Berlin Android chapter. Uh, I did a lot of events there, even the Dev Fest. We have this year's third one in Berlin. And I'm here because I'm an Android developer at Mobilian Scout. Sorry. And Mobilian Scout is the largest uh, real estate listing uh, company in Germany. It's like eBay for real estate. Or you can s uh, look at Cybernet.com. It's similar. We have about 10 and a half million monthly unit users. We have served one and a half million real estate. And therefore, we have users looking at 300 million detailed pages of the real estate. We have about more than 300 million views of the page per month. And we serve those pages and services with more than 1,500 servers. And that's why I'm saying here today, we have about one and a half million app downloads and only Android is three and a half million. And our traffic on the whole page is more than 55% is mobile. It's not just mobile devices like Android and iOS, it's also tablets, a Windows phone, and so on, which using as a mobile device to serving our services. So let's, explain, let's make a little story about it. At first, once upon a time, there was a developer. He has a lot of time. He thought he should do something with his experience and his knowledge. So he, while well, sitting at home, watching TV with his children, he said, OK, TV is very interesting. Even for my children, I should create something there for that. That's why he thought about creating something for Google TV. Wait, Google TV is a, don't anymore because now it's Android TV. The most popular one, or the first device which was created, is the Nexus player by Google. Unfortunately, it's not available in Turkey, only in America and UK, even not in Germany. Uh, but there are some developer devices which you can get possibly from their page for creating something for them. Now let's build at first a ground for our development before we start programming. There are some prerequisites. At first, you should think that the TV is in casual consumption. You don't have like a smartphone in your hand where you look always on the, on the uh, screen. So you should make a user experience. This is for the con uh, constructor for the uh, visual, for the casual consumption. You should have a cinematic experience. Don't use small uh, sizes of text. Use large images, large text. Use the screen which is available there. And be simplicity. You have no touchpad area. Make it easy to use. And for easy to use, you have different possibilities in the navigation. At first, you have a home button, like on, the, on your phone. Then you have an enter button, which is normally not on the phone available directly. The enter button is a touch area, more or less, a touch uh, event. You have a back button. And you, because I said you haven't any touch possibilities, you have a D-pad navigation with two axes. To use the navigation with uh, uh, the D-pad, you should consider a screen more like this one, where you have left to right and up to down. That's really important for you because you can't uh, go uh, from between the high and the right, for example. So make your whole screen and user experience more dependent on that. That's the catalog browser. Oh, I see. So it's not really good to see. I'm sorry for that. But nevertheless, for the navigation, you can help the user to understand the navigation. Use appropriate states for your focus and selected uh, of your elements, items. You can use sound, but please be occasional. Don't use it every time and too much noise. Because if you just click through the uh, device, you don't want to always have a beep, 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 and so on. Be occasional with that and use it less, but on the right side where you need it. And use the next focus target. This was previously also available at Google TV. You should, you can des design your own user flow, and the user experience in the whole system. And the most important thing, if you make all the things, test it. Because if you test it all day long, you see if it's too much noise. So you're getting really, we became aggressively about it. 
or annoyed. So make it less is better than doing too much. Now we can start. And as a developer, we need libraries for creating something. At first, we need to lean back support libraries, which is dependent on V17. After that, you need a recycler support library, recycler view. Also, the card view, which is now the main metaphor in Android. <coughs> and all these libraries force you to use this V4 support library with the uh, fragments and so on, which are available there because you have to use them. You can't use, even if you have a min SDK 14, you have to use them because without them, you can't use the whole libraries around it. Now we have the libraries. Now extend the, your Android manifest to use the whole stuff. Therefore, at first you have to manifest, you, you add some features which you want to use. At first, touch screen. Please make it on false. Uh, the touch screen, make, please make it on false because if you say it's uh, required for you, you can't, the users can't use you because it's, they can't see you in the Play Store. The next thing that is important for the, uh, for the Android TV application is you should have to use the feature uh, lean back. This is required true if you have an Android TV only application, if you want to make an application which should also run on a smartphone, tablet, and on a TV, you should make it false. And you can take your own things around that. So far for the user features, and then go to the application. In the application, you have to add a banner. The banner is the thing which is shown in the lo uh, launcher of the Android TV, with this the launcher item which you have normally is square on the phone or the tablet. You should use a more a four to three image for showing to the users your smart banner, your application, that is awesome. After that, sorry, was too much. Okay, then you have an activity. Therefore, you have to use the scene, you should use the scene lean back as a parent app. Uh, theme for your application because this helps you a lot of this animation with the whole theming and styling of your apl uh, application. Then you have to use an intent filter. You can't use a normal launcher intent filter for Android TV. You have to use the lean back launcher. So we have two different entries, one for the smartphone and tablet, so it's a normal launcher, and one for the lean back, which is the Android TV one. And because it's Android TV, you don't have every hardware support like on the phone. For example, you can't have, don't have a touch screen. You don't have a telephone, camera, NFC, GPS, all that stuff. You, it's not available in the moment in Android TV. You have the location, but it's not GPS. It's uh, entered by the user, with, uh, postal code. <coughs> and you, you don't have directly access to the microphone. There's a listener service. You can say, I want to have a uh, text, speech to text service. So you get the text directly from the microphone, from the controller, from the user. And because of that features, you should avoid filtering on the place, so like I said before. You should set the required fields to false so they can find you in the Play Store. Because if you don't do that, they can't find you and can't use you, so you can't get the users that you want for your application. And now we set out the things for the manifest. How you can see in your code if it's an Android TV. That's fairly easy. At first, you get the UI manager, UI mode manager, with the system service. From the system service, you get check the current mode type, and now, okay, stop my refresh. Okay, uh, get the current mode type, and currently there's only one which says, says it's an Android TV. If it's not an Android TV, you can say it's something else, a smartphone, tablet, whatever. And that more or less far less easy to recognize through code. And if you create your own screens for Android TV, you should consider the so-called overscan mode, overscan. Because the new TVs have always an area on the TV on the right, on every uh, corner, which you can't use directly. 
normally sometimes you can't see it, sometimes you can't make in any interactions there because it's the border of the TV which is normally not really usable. So you should consider making the most important information in the right area. And the area is about 10% of the screen. And Google has a lot regarding that, but we'll, I'll explain later more. And now are some UI patterns which you shouldn't use there. At first, don't reuse your phone or tablet layout. Because your phone and tablet layout is completely designed for a touch area, but not for a D-pad or something else. You should consider using the another code for a better user experience. Don't use ever the action bar. It doesn't make any sense in Android TV. Even the navigation drawer, don't use it. There are better approaches by Google to go there and help by classes. Don't use a view pager. Because the view pages normally you can swipe through the pages, which you can't do on Android TV. And now let's take a deeper look at the use design patterns. Most of you probably know the model view controller pattern, which you can use to access the model and and the view and the controller accessing the model and creating everything for the users for showing them for the preparation of code. In Android TV, they use another approach. It's called the model view presenter. You have a model. The presenter takes every information of the model and puts it into the view. And the view and the presenter just talks with each other. And the, the view doesn't know its model which is depending on. And now to the base class, which Google offers you in the Leanback support library. At first, the browse fragment. With the browse fragment, you can create just an easy catalog view. On the left side, you have the, uh, the categories which you can define with adapters. And then for every adapter, you have a row with the content which you want to present. Therefore, you, they are using the card. <laughs> and if you press it, you get a detailed fragment for which you can use. The detailed fragment is this one where you can set, use different possibilities. It's more like designed more for playback thing or TV things, for showing videos and listening to music. That's a fairly easy thing. You have just use a small image, your text, and some buttons which you can use. And that's not the only thing by the detail fragment. It also offers you the possibility to add related topics to the detail fragment, where you can add your recommendation for this content which you are showing in the moment to the user. Another important uh, thing which uh, Android TV support uh, is offering is the search fragment. With the search fragment, you are able to use from the remote some, some microphone so the user can say its commands or what you want to search in your application and you can interact directly with the search result in your application without leaving your application. Another important thing is the recommendations. There is no direct base class for that, but you have the possibility to be on the home screen of your user. If you, for example, have a video, watch, a user has watched a video, and you say, that video, is, I recommend to you to watch it also. You can put it directly on the home screen of the user. It's more or less like notifications. As you can use the same base class as the notification builder for that, the compact one, for showing notification as a recommendation for the user on Android TV. That's for, for the development side. Now we want to test the whole thing. How we can test it? Well, the first approach is to use an emulator. They are good. Now, in the, compared to the previous one, but as they are not so sophisticated like you really want to see because they are not smooth like in a, in a real device. At first, Google uh, showed us the ADT1, which is the Android TV development device, which they gave out at the I.O. for attendees on a special session, but you can also order it. But the problem I know in Turkey, even for Germany, is you can't get it directly. They are just US setting at first. Now they also can have it in the UK, as far as I know. But if we have some Googlers here and ask them, they are possibly are able to make a possibility to get one ADT. Because the ADT is one better than the Nexus player, because you have that um, wired connection, you can access with a cable to it. You have an USB for debugging and development mode, which is much, much easier to use, and it's really a nice thing. I had one at home. From my point of view, it's not, the UI is not so smooth like Fire TV, but it's evolving as the first iteration and it's become better and better with every update which you get. And like I said, the Nexus player, it's more or less. Um, Easier device, but only Wi-Fi without any cables. So sometimes it would be hard for you to use it if you have flaky Wi-Fi connections at your home and a 
or you have too many ones, so the conflicts be between the Wi-Fi is making it hard for you to work. So now you are a developer, you have created your application, and you can relax a little bit and see the money coming to you. And some days later, a friend of you sent you a message he wants to talk to you, because he said, yeah, Android TV is amazing, but the problem at the moment is Android TV is not so widespread at the moment, so we should go another approach, that's Chromecast. Chromecast is a small, small HDMI dongle which you just put into your plug it into your uh, television with, to the HDMI input, add USB for power, and with, uh, with the setup, the whole Wi-Fi thing, you can use it as a casting device for your website or something else. And after the conversation with your friend, you see you can conquer a new world. Go off your whole route and use the whole system for getting the big screen. And to make that, he, he looked at it, how to do it. Now at first you have to make a registration for a uh, merchant account there. It's cost, uh, the fee is only $5. With that you can register an application and, the, and develop a devices. That's really important if you want to develop something for that because you can't make it locally without their servers because you have to use them. Everything going through the drum, uh, Google, GCM stuff, and therefore you have to create an application with the application ID which you have to register on your Chromecast, send the application so it can uh, communicate directly. And if you, for example, set it to Um, you uh, have to use, uh, you can, can publish it then application, you can make it private for yourself, and if you want to access them, you have to uh, register your de uh, development devices for using it. For, for the whole system, you have to create a sender application. It's not only Android, you also can, they have SDKs for iOS and for the Chrome, for websites. And for creating an Android application, you, you even need, again, some libraries. At first, you need the App Compat Support Library. The App Compat Support Library is used for the action bar on your uh, Android application for setting, for having the icon for the Chromecast and the whole provider stuff there. You can create your own one, but it's not as good as using the standard way because the user see it and understand it immediately. <coughs> After that, you, use the, uh, you have to use the Media Router Support uh, Library. It's used for making the connection between your device and your Chromecast. And for that, you also have to use the Google Play services, because with the whole Play services, you get a direct connection uh, to, the, to your Chromecast application, receiver application for making bidirectional communication available. And that, again, forces you to use another library, which is, again, the V4 support library. And last but not least, uh, you'll need also in, 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 to create a receiver application. The so receiver application is an HTML5 page where you have to set some JavaScripts for using the casting, but that's everything. And then you can use every JavaScript framework that you want to use there to uh, support your application. And now you can have to wait again for getting more money. And some days later, you are starting to complain about the application because they can't use it directly with your Chromecast. And you say, why? You make interrogation interviews with your users, and later on, you understand the problem. They are using not the casting possibility, they are using the mirror casting. It's an easy way to use it. You just cast directly your screen from your application to the screen. And therefore, Google has a presentation API which you can use. It's supported since API level 17 in Android for supporting secondary screens. At first, I'd say announced this was more or less uh, for the mirror casting stuff and the Samsung stuff which was uh, available. And finally, Google extended the casting possibility to also use the presentation API for the secondary screen. So we have the possibility to create an UI for your phone and can define a different UI for the screen, uh, casted screen. So you can make the most of your application with that. It's more or less like I said, for the, similar to the mirror casting. And finally, we can now rule the world with your, our application. 
I see you spoke again fast, uh, sorry. But do we have any questions? Yes, please. Uh, you told us about the uh, Android TV. Yes. Uh, In the moment, Philips has some, but they are the, pre the Google TV stuff. They just rename it to Android TV. But Sony said and Philips said they will create new t televisions with as media center with Android TV. And even the smart TV which they have should be under Android TV. So the main system should be Android TV. And I think Samsung probably won't do it. They will start with their smart TV stuff which they have. But at least Philips and Sony are not already, and I think a lot more will come in the future. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, on Android TVs, will there be any play with the DRM support or some streaming support? Do you know that kind of? In the moment, they are supporting the DRM stuff, which I also have in the Android area, and also the streaming small as because it's an Android more or less. As far as I know, you can't create your own codecs for the Chromecast, uh, but for the Android TV, you can use everything which is available in Android. Uh, in Android. It should be possible there. More questions? Yes, I can. Well, to be honest, as far as I know, the license by Google doesn't allow you to create your own market in their application. But at least, like I showed, one second. I should go. Yeah. You can see you have the possibilities to make your own purchasing stuff. You can rent, you can insert the. Uh, the billing API, the purchasing API directly into your Android TV application, so you can sell products in your system for videos, images, whatever you want, but not as applications. Just add some services for yourself, but that's more or less the whole thing. Yes. Well, it depends. Uh, Google TV succeeded all also, but not in Europe and America. It succeeded in North South Korea because all broadcasters used the Google TV as their main receiver application. Everyone there, so it was really successful in that South uh, Asian Africa. But the, the approach is really different to Google TV because Google TV was mentioned to be a media center for the broadcasters. So they can live stream directly through the, uh, through the uh, Google TV. Android TV has another approach. It's like a media player next to your television or a media receiver, which can add on to your normal stuff. They offer the possibilities for the broadcasters, as far as I know. They can also go into this uh, ship for broadcasting through Android TV. But the main topic is really it's a, next, it's a media player in your living room, which you can connect directly with your a phone or your tablet, any device that you have. And the important thing is, Android TV is not just application, it's also a, a casting device. So in, 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 in the Nexus player, in Android TV, it also, <coughs> also installs a Chromecast protocol. So you can have a device for making application and also Chromecasting. More questions? So everyone will start tomorrow without any device. <laughs> um, Just one last question. Yes. Uh, for the Chromecast, uh, I tried to implement a Chrome extension, but it didn't uh, allow me to implement any extension on Chrome for Chromecasting. Do you know what is the reason? To be honest, not really. Did <laughs> um, you use also the normal? Uh, um, uh, default implementations by them for seeing if it works the normal way? Yes, on the standard side. And on the receiver side? Uh, it's, it's still the same. But when I put the code into the Chrome extension code, hmm. it didn't allow me. It just 
throws an exception for you're not allowed to use this okay. library from no, Chrome extension. The, the Chrome extension is not your web page. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in a different sandbox. So it can't really see the, um, the domain which you are asking for because you have to set your domain also specific in your code so it directly contacts with it. So the, the Chrome extension doesn't work with Chromecast. That's why also Google, the YouTube and so on have it directly in their web page to connecting the whole stuff. More questions? So if not, feel free to call, oh sorry, yes. Yes. As far as I read or know, the new HTMI standard 1.4a have also power supply in, uh, into it, but in the moment they, they, Google doesn't have such a device which gets directly power through the HDMI. If it's that's possible, you don't need any USB, but at least as a developer you need USB if you want to make something with the Chromecast directly. But at the end, it, you just need to throw the power in for nothing else. You're right, it would be better, but in the moment, the standard was not available in that moment. But I can't tell anything regarding Google because it's their own programs. Because Chrome is very similar to Visual Flash Memory. Yes, more or less, yes. More questions? Yes. They are not supporting it. Camera is very important for You are right in the moment they don't have it. Possibly they will add it in the future. But as far as I remember, as the Xbox One came out and it had some camera which is always on, everybody complained regarding. Uh, so data security, <coughs> and it should it would be again the problem. So I think the first step was to create a uh, device without any uh, um, camera. But the microphone is an interesting thing. You don't have directly access to the microphone, but the remote has a microphone, so you can just go through that way. But you can't make them hang out via the microphone directly. So that's not possible in the moment, as far as I know. But normally the Android TV is not con constructed and designed for a personal use. It's for a living room use. So we don't use directly in that, that area for that. Then we, uh, Google has the Chromeboxes which you can use, which is everything uh, prepared for using it as a Hangout device. They uh, bring it out in the moment in the US and also in some Euro uh, European states where you can have a Chromebox with everything created to, to make uh, Hangouts directly. More questions? So, okay, the last slide we can skip. Um, you can find this, uh, this session also on Slideshow, like I said. It should be available in 10 minutes, hopefully if the system works. And feel free to contact me later on during the whole area here in the breaks. Thank you very much.